Morning everybody, welcome to this week's Midweek Thought for the Day um, and we're going to be thinking about Ruth today. So uh, Ruth is a whole book in the Bible, it's four chapters and it talks about Ruth's life, what happens to her and so I um, thought today we'd think about that, think about some of the things uh, that the story is telling us. Um, basically, um, I'm going to read you a bit from um, the middle of the story. Basically, um, Naomi and her husband and their two sons move away from where they were living near Bethlehem to Moab. And um, they go to Moab because they hear that there's food there and it's easier to be there. The husband dies, Naomi's husband dies and they find uh, wives for the sons from the local people, from the Moabites. So this is a story which occurs after the Exodus and uh, moving to the Promised Land and all those sorts of things, but before David, So, uh, which will be more pertinent in a moment. So we're going to start with the uh, reading um, from Ruth chapter 1 and uh, beginning at verse 6. So this is called Naomi and her daughters-in-law. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, both the sons had died at this point as well, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house, may the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband, even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons. Would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain, refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus to me and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. So that's the little story in the middle. And that's the most famous bit of this story about Ruth and Naomi and the bit where, where Ruth pledges to um, Naomi that she's going to go with her and that she won't leave her, that she's going to be with her. And then another interesting bit of the story goes on. So they go back to Bethlehem and they have nothing. They're kind of destitute. Although we think they might have legal right to a field. That comes in a bit later on in the story. So they are destitute. They arrive, but they hear that there's food and it's harvest time. Ruth goes out and gleans which means she picks up the bits that are left over it's the edge of the barley harvest she goes and picks up the edge of the field which is what is the rule it's the rule for israelites that they will let people do that so that people who are really starving can can have some of the very edge of the crops that they'll gather in which would otherwise be wasted and the field belongs to boaz now, Boaz is related to Naomi's family um, distantly and, uh, and Boaz is kind to Ruth. He's really kind to Ruth. He says to the young men, don't you dare bother her, which is a useful thing when you're 
a lone woman in a strange land. That's a very useful thing. And he says to the women, you keep an eye on her, keep make sure that she's okay. And um, then there's this kind of strange encounter which happens in the threshing floor, <sighs> interpreted by men. And we don't really know. Again, we don't really know what's going on with this. So um, Ruth goes to Boaz and the language is ambiguous. It's night time. Ruth goes in to see him. And the men, the reason I was rolling my eyes earlier is the male interpretants of the story over the years assume that this is in section of nature, although the language is ambiguous. But they have this conversation about um, what's going to happen. And uh, Boaz, because he is kind of their kin, has a, an obligation to look after them. So uh, the next morning, Boaz is related as going to the gate, which is where all the all the people gather, business is conducted, all that sorts of thing, to sort out with the person who is technically more next of kin than Boaz. And um, and says, do you want them? And this person says, no. So Ruth marries them, marries Boaz, and they have a family together. And it's quite a complicated story because some of it is technically not very good. I got my big book out last night and had a read through of it about Ruth. Uh, Elspeth came down and said, that's a big book. And I'm like, it's all right, I'm only reading a little tiny bit of it. Um, and again, it, it talked about this encounter in the thresh on the threshing floor and no one really knowing what it, it what, what went on there um, on, on the threshing floor between Ruth and Boaz. But anyway, Boaz is keen um, to look after them. And there's kind of a a difference about how the how the looking after is supposed to be so yeah Boaz is technically next of kin so he does have a role to look after them but this is not usually always through marriage this is not expected in the same way as as the marriage and brother situations. So if you were married and the brother died, then the, another brother should be giving you a son to be your heir and so on. Um, but this is a bit more complicated. So really it is a bit more complicated. So Ruth is this kind of heroine for not abandoning Naomi, for saying that her place will be with Naomi and that her land will be her land and her God will be her. God and all this sort of thing so but Ruth is still a Moabite and then they have these children and it's very interesting to see who these children are that they have um so Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife when they came together the Lord made her conceive and she brought a son then the women said to Naomi blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without next of kin and may his name be renowned in Israel he shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you is more to you than seven sons has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighbourhoods gave him a name saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed and he became the father of Jesse, the father of David. So David, the David there is David, you know, small king, Goliath, big king, Bathsheba, uh, rules for a long time, Solomon then goes on. So it's that David, it's that David. So Ruth is um, David's granny. Is that right? Yeah. So that's kind of strange because she was a Moabite. It's really interesting, but she was this woman who came to faith. I've been thinking about this this morning and sometimes strangers tell us about ourselves in a way that reminds us who we are and that's kind of what we see in this story. So Ruth is a, a Moabite, she has uh, affiliated herself to Naomi, to Naomi's God, to Naomi's land. She goes in and by these actions of Boaz, uh, kind of she reminds the community who they are, that they are God's community, they are a welcoming community, they are responsible for each other, they care for each other. And sometimes it's that interaction with a stranger that reminds us who we are. 
uh, years ago when I was in Wellington, I um, I was working with someone who was in quite a difficult situation. She had lots of really bad things going on in her life. And uh, I was trying to encourage her to come to our children's work activities. And uh, she said to me, as I gave her a leaflet, she said to me, I don't think we can afford to come. And I'm like, but it doesn't cost anything because it's church. And that's who we are. That this is who we are. You come and it doesn't matter if you've got any money or not. You come to church because this is who, this is who we are. And so um, for me, that was quite interesting. And why I always try to put on things that advertising children's things, that it's free. And why, why we never charge for a holiday club? Because it's part of church and church is open to everyone. And that is who we are. And sometimes it takes a stranger to remind us that is who we are. And Ruth was that stranger. And Ruth, of course, went on to be David's granny. And then David's line went on to produce Jesus in, again, quite a complicated family situation. So this look at Ruth has shown us that families are complicated, really complicated again, uh, but God can act through that and God does act through that. And strangers can remind us who we are in a good way and be part of who we are as well as Ruth became a huge part of God's story of salvation, even though she was a Moabite. She was David's granny. So today, thinking about strangers, thinking about who we are, thinking about uh, how we explain ourselves to people who don't understand us, maybe how we act, what our motivations are, um, how is that for us? Have a look at the story of Ruth. It's only a few chapters, very interesting. Again, not as ancient as like the stories of Sarah, but not as new as this kind of contemporary, I, mean, I don't want to call the Jesus contemporary, but you know what I mean. It's actually quite accessible for us because their lives were quite similar in some ways in structure, Roman oppression, all that sort of stuff. They had a lot of bureaucracy and things that we recognise. Kind of sitting in between the story of Ruth, the stranger, who becomes uh, the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus. Thank you very much and we'll see you all soon. Bye.